What is up, humans of the cardboard? Welcome back to Just Nuts. Guys, if you are wondering, we're going through our top 10 cards to pick up from Burst of Destiny. Keep in mind, we're trying to keep this more generic than normal because this is supposed to apply to like the generic player in general. But some of these do need to be a little bit specific, but I do think they cover multiple bases. So for a lot of different players, instead of just, you know, one trick pony type players that just play one specific deck, they may apply to like anybody who kind of mixes it around a little bit so we're gonna be going through that um very very powerful set if you have not seen my full review of the set check it out it's my most recent video um, aside from this one the set's insane the set's really good it's one of the best core sets we've seen in a long time as far as it's going to affect the meta game and i cannot wait for that um so without further ado let's just start off with some of our honorable mentions as far as some generic cards go first off i have to throw something out there for rocket caliber it's one of the new rocket cards it's a cool card it kind of works like a crusadia as long as you have a, a dark link monster pointing down he can summon himself to that zone could also be orcus <laughs> an orcus extender as well but nice card it can also help pull any dark dragon or machine monster out of the hand that's also pretty good Next up here, we have Knight Sword Serpent. This card, more so than anything, is like helpful for just reptiles in general, but Konami's kind of just been like compiling all of the reptile support into one. Like, yes, we got alien support. Yes, we got reptilian support. Yes, we've got an Ogdoatic as an archetype, and now they're getting support in the next core set. But they all kind of feel like they work best when they're just combined into one because um, neither of them are strong enough on their own. And so this card actually really helps, especially considering if you are going to play that deck, Snake Rain's a thing. The new Ogdoatic spell sends a monster from hand. I don't believe that's cost. Uh, I do need to check on that, though. Um, if it isn't cost, then this card works. If it is cost, this card doesn't work quite as well. But still, just something to keep in mind. Um, and uh yeah i mean just just having an extra body like this this is the kind of extender like the deck really really appreciates just something that could jump out of the hand like crazy or jump out of the grave when it's sent uh, just to give you another level four the level is right to help us make rank four plays really solid and i believe oh no no okay sign a cross wipe another card to mention it's cyber support a quick effect tribute any cyber target card in the field and destroy it it's very nice utility it's a sign it card as well so technically it is searchable off of micro coder which is very nice as well uh, just something to keep in mind should uh, any cyber sec should we get like heat soul this card becomes a little more interesting and then we move to our actual top 10 list starting off here with incredible ecclesia the virtuous now i will start off by saying yes this card is mostly sword soul support if you don't know what this card does it kind of works like a um what is it it kind of works like a uh, pancratops at first right if your opponent has more monsters than you you can summon it from the hand for free so going second it's a very nice extender but also it has a quick effect where uh during the main phase it contributes itself as cost to special summon a sword soul monster or a fallen of albaz from hand or deck and then also during the end phase of a fusion monster or monsters was sent to your grave this turn, she can add herself back. Long story short, in Sword Soul, she's really just taking advantage of that ability to one, to help them go second, play through interruptions, and two, be able to just cheat out consistently, uh, or well, add consistency to their deck by being able to turbo some of their monsters straight out of the deck. It's pretty nice. But I don't know if you heard, we're getting this new Fallen of Albaz structure deck. We've got support for it here. And I think Konami's gonna try and build a little mini archetype around Albaz to make him actually work. And should that actually be the case, this card becomes a lot more interesting. Also, don't forget this card's a tuner, which could come up. But anyway, the whole goal is like, if you can cheat out Albaz and Albaz on your opponent's turn is like fusing away their stuff or even on your turn. Um, and then somehow you link the monster off or your opponent outs the monster. If that monster has just been sent to grave that turn, on the end phase, she's just adding herself back to hand. So extra synergy there, extra grindability there. I do think she'll come up in stuff outside of um, just the Sword Soul deck. We just need to see exactly what else can take advantage of her. But I do think she is a really strong card, and I hope we see her get some extra uses, not just in Sword Soul. Number nine, we've got Sunvine Sewing. Now, I know what you're saying, John, this is just a Sun Avalon card. It summons one specific monster. I'm like, I get that. But I don't think this just applies to pure Sun Avalon. I do think there is a world where we can try to play some crazy plant amalgamation, combine three or four different archetypes into one, and this card just becomes one of the primary engines 
because even normal summoning Lochi is like a one card combo. So this just allows you to like get a one card combo without using your normal summon, uh, which is really crazy. So I do think that could apply. We just need to keep an eye out for it though. Um, but trust me, this, this, stuff, the, this deck is like crazy. Uh, this card makes the deck kind of crazy. I want to try and build it. I want to see what I can do, see what I can really push plants to see how they can perform. I do think they do struggle with stuff like Nibiru um, as well as, I don't know, certain other things um, as well. But, you know, I, I do think as a combo deck, it, it is actually very resilient, doesn't lose to hand traps uh, outside of like maybe Nib. And um, this card could be a huge reason why. So we'll throw that in there at number nine, generic plant craziness, sunvine sewing. Moving to number eight, we have Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying. This card's kind of crazy. I, the other synchro is somewhat generic, but it searches specifically a Sword Soul card, and that's like the biggest effect it has, in my opinion. And so because of that, I, I just mean, I just think it's too Sword Soul-y. But I do still think this guy is generically like a bomb synchro card. Now, maybe it's just poor timing that we're also getting Baroness to floor, and why, why are you making this guy instead of Baroness to floor? I get that, but still, he is a house in and of himself. So first and foremost, he's completely generic to make. Secondly, he gains 100 attack and defense for every monster uh, or every banished card, period, yours and your opponent's, and your opponent's lose 100 attack and defense for every banished card. That means if your opponent activates desires, he's 4,000 and every monster they control is 1,000 less. So it becomes very hard to beat over this guy very, very quickly. And then if this card would ever be destroyed by card effect, you can banish a card from your graveyard instead. That's kind of like the Thunder Dragon protection effects, uh, which is very good. It's a replacement effect, which then also triggers his final effect, which says if a card is ever banished, except during the damage step, you can banish one card each from both your opponent's field and graveyard. That is insanely strong, um, especially if you have a way to quick trigger this. I mean, maybe you play a trap deck and you just play um, Trap Trick. You can trap trick banishing a trap to then set a card and that triggers this guy and it's a very flexible trap that you can activate at any point and then get a banish banish from a field and grave and now you also have a trap you searched off of it to be live as well so i think this card is a house certain decks really really will struggle to get around this card especially if they banish via their mechanic because they're just going to trigger him um when they don't want to and get punished for it which is amazing so really really cool card definitely a house of a synchro monster if you like synchros this may just be a worthwhile generic one to pick up next up we move to zora the magistus conflagrant calamity crazy card here um, i know what you're thinking again john this is magistus support why what do you mean generically i need to pick this up i don't I'm not necessarily saying you generically have to pick this up but i don't know if you've been paying attention but konami seems to be making some solid spellcaster archetypes year after year after year we get dogmatica we get magistus which i know had a slower start but now it has a legit powerful win condition in this card we've always had invoked right spellbook and stuff definitely something that could be thrown in there as well and i wouldn't be surprised if we got support for them sooner rather than later um so long story short we have like these nice little like bases of like you know spell caster engines and they do somewhat work together witchcraft is another one we'll see what the new support has for them um, but they're interesting not great um but anyway we could see i wouldn't be surprised if we see down the line maybe there's just like a spell caster combination deck where uh it actually ends up being meta just because dogmatic is good magistus can do some cool things invoked is obviously it's always been solid and it all just comes together in the right way and becomes meta and this card could be huge for that it's pretty generic all that means that it's specific is a spell caster tuner which you know whatever um but otherwise really really good it equips a magistus monster from extra deck to itself on a summon which could be the which could be the link one which then gets a search and it is like a skill drain for any type of monster equipped to it so extra deck fusion synchro exit or link it's just a skill drain for any of those types and it can bring itself back from grave pretty easily so very very powerful card very cool card definitely something to keep in mind should konami throw i don't know one more either wave of support with spellcasters or maybe one more little archetype or something and maybe the deck can just run and 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 go crazy but we'll have to obviously see Next up, Sword Soul Blackout. This card is essentially just Icarus attack, but for worms. So if you ever see yourself playing worms in the future, not only is this great in Sword Soul, it's great in Tenny because they have ways to float off of destruction specifically. I'm looking at Shitana, but um, 
you know, you also have ways to summon like simple little link ones that you don't really care that much if they get blown off the field, if you're gonna be popping two cards. We also have stuff like um, uh, uh, Yang Zing. We'll see if we ever get Den Long, Deng Long back. The OCGs had him. We could easily get Deng Long back at some point. That would make this card even crazier because this card's really good in that deck. And even Zephyrus. They have uh, uh, Zephyr New, where if he's destroyed, he gets a search. So you know trade a monster to pop to and then also get a search for follow-up seems pretty good to me definitely keep an eye on that card then we get to the really true generic cards first up is boral code dragon this card's crazy um he gets protection if he's being pointed to by a link monster if he's made by three different monsters um when it battles it can destroy all monsters on the field that's non-targeting just wipe the field including himself but sometimes to wipe the field that's worth it and his last effect says you can banish him from grave to banish a dark monster with 3,000 or more attack from the field. And if you do, you summon a topologic monster from your extra deck or grave. That's kind of crazy. Only requires you to play one more card in the extra deck. And the topologic logics aren't bad anyway, but the card is kind of crazy. If you resolve it, you could actually be in a pretty crazy position, especially in the right matchup where your opponent knows they have to put something like this on the field also this doesn't target so this outs dragoon this also um outs i believe phoenix enforcer is an, is 3000 and i think that means he, he outs him as well so pretty nasty card i am a fan myself then we get to the next one spell a small world um i don't want to go too deep on this card because this card is kind of insane it kind of says um like <laughs> you banish a card in your hand that has one thing in common with a card with a monster in your deck that you reveal then you banish the monster in your deck that you revealed and that card needs to have one thing in common exactly with one more card in your deck and you can add that card to your hand it sounds like a lot you need to read through it you need to look at there's a bunch of videos already online like explaining kind of how this card works and it is kind of insane but once you get it down and you build a deck around it it makes a lot more sense but essentially it's a generic search card Keep it in mind, it could be really good in very specific decks that need help with consistency. And then we get to Cupid Pitch. I think this card is going to be crazy. I've already been seeing stuff about this card and how like it, it could make Halk combo decks like legitimately good again, whereas like Halk hasn't been giving us enough payoff as of late to really make it worth running just like hard Halk combo decks. But this card searches any level 8 or lower monster with 600 defense exactly from deck to hand. Turns out that's actually a pretty large pool of cards, including some solid, just basic extenders. And that actually makes this card pretty good. Also, it changes its level, so it actually makes it malleable to make certain synchro boards as well. So definitely an important combo piece that is going to come up. I guarantee you that. I just don't know exactly how yet. Next up, Lord of the Heavenly Prison. I think this card's crazy. This card is going to support uh, a ton of like back row decks. So what he says is you can reveal him from hand and he makes it so that uh, n while he's revealed, you, none of your set cards can be destroyed by uh, card effects, um, which is really nice. Saves you from Lightning Storm, saves you from Harpy's Feather Luster, uh, Twin Twisters, any of that stuff, you are protected. Also, if a set spell or trap is activated, you can special summon him from your hand. Then if you did, uh, while he was revealed, he can then set any spell or trap straight from the deck. That's insane. The card does get banished on the next end phase, but if you're setting follow-up, it's almost always going to be a spell that you're definitely going to activate on the next turn. Um, and if it's a trap, you'll probably also be activating it next turn for just insane value. So that's not the biggest deal. But this card is crazy. I think he helps out very specific decks, but I think those decks actually exist in a certain number there's actually a decent amount of them. i think layer of darkness is going to be one of them cannot wait to try this guy out he's also searchable in that deck funny enough this card's kind of crazy definitely going to keep an eye on him definitely going to look out to play this card it uh it's a really cool one definitely going to try and scoop him and of course the final card number one on our list today it has to be Des destiny hero destroy phoenix enforcer this card is insane it is a walking dryden has a quick effect to destroy both one card you control and one other card on the field. I'd love that that's generic. That can actually help you play around certain stuff. Secondly, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, including his own effect to destroy himself to dodge things, you can activate this effect where he summons a Destiny Hero monster from your grave during the standby phase of the next turn. That includes him. He is a Destiny Hero monster. This card is insane. Also, he makes all monsters your opponent control lose 200 attack for all hero monsters in your graveyard. If he's just generically being splashed into your deck, he's just lowering everything by 400, which makes him beat anything that's 29 or lower. Um, but still, 
Um, this card's kind of crazy. He comes back turn after turn. You have to have quick effect cards that like can handle him. And if you don't, he's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. So he is definitely the next Dragoon in my opinion. He is definitely a pain in the keister. And uh, good luck because... There's a card called Fusion Destiny. It's a hero fusion card. It does lock you into heroes, but the idea is if you just play three of it, it only locks you into heroes for the rest of the turn, not the entire turn like Red Eyes Fusion. So you just get to fusion this guy off as the last thing you do on your turn. And it's almost like Ecclesia, right? You do your whole play because Ecclesia locks you into stuff. You have Ecclesia after you've been stopped or after you've already done your full combo to that point, And then you get extra value. It's kind of like that, except this guy is just much more of a house than something like Ecclesia is. Maybe Nadir is comparable to it, resolving Nadir versus Fusion Destiny, but... This card's insane. This card is going to be played in a lot of meta decks. You need to be aware of this card because if you don't have cards in your deck to beat this card, you will lose to it. Straight up, you just will. So good luck. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our top 10 list for the most important cards to pick up from Burst of Destiny. There's some really high-end good generic cards, and there's also some, some cards that maybe they're not like straight up, straight up generic, like the Magistus card, like the Synablon card, but if you just play plant decks or if you just like spellcaster type decks, those cards could be huge later down the line to make sure you have your hands on uh, for when those decks do become legitimately, legitimately good in the game. And I do think they all have a chance to. So just keep an eye on it. But that's going to do it for me here today, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below if you would switch your list around. Uh, if you'd have something else in here that you think I missed. Of course, I'm just one dude. And I, I, I'm, I, I stink. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.